Okay, the next talk will be uh, from uh, Matthias Fink uh, the, from the Lanshevin Institute and is on uh, wave control for wireless communication from time reversal processing to reconfigurable intelligent surfaces. Thank you, and please, uh, you can okay. start. Uh, thank you for the invitation, a beautiful meeting. It's a pity that we cannot directly come, but next time. Uh, okay, I will speak uh, mainly of uh, wireless communication, uh, and especially in complex medium, how can you improve wireless communication by uh, doing wave control? And I will recall you what we have done initially on time reversal processing to do this business. And I will show you how reconfigurable intelligence meta surface can do the job in a passive way. Uh, and uh, it may be really interesting uh, for energy purpose. Uh, as you know, when uh, you are looking for wave propagation, microwave propagation in a city or in a room, uh, you are in a very complex medium. It is not free space. Uh, through a forest is the same problem. You have many obstacles. There, there will be a lot of scattering by each obstacle and there will be a regime of multiple scattering and multiple reverberation. This makes that the field that an antenna creates is quite complex. The wave field that you create, in fact, is the sum of all the scattered waves. And this wave field can be very random. Uh, in free space, the wave field is well controlled. In a random medium, the wave field has really a random pattern. And this is well known uh, when, for example, you have a glass of milk, and if you send a laser beam at one frequency, a red color, for example, if you look on the screen, uh, what is the color field, you will see this kind of field that everybody knows. Uh, People call this speckle figure. There is a lot of small speckle grain randomly distributed. And in fact, each of these grain uh, has a size which is the same that what will give a lens who has the same size that all the milk. But of course, it is not just a focus point. It is a random distribution of focus points. And when you have this kind of figure, it tells you that the wave field is random. It has a coherent length, which is typically the distance between two uh, small speckled grains. And this is related to the, foca to the size of the focal spot. It has also a coherence frequency. That is to say, if you change the frequency of your laser from some value, uh, after some change of frequency, the pattern will be completely uncorrelated. And this is called coherence frequency. This characterize any complex medium when you send wave in it. Now, this is also true when you send wave in a cavity, like a room. And a cavity, usually it is not an integral cavity, not a nice cavity. You call this chaotic cavity. And when you look the wave field produced by an antenna, if you work at one frequency, the pattern of the wave field is like what is called a Negan mode and you have bright spot, black spot. And here you have a coherent length, which is typically in a closed room, lambda over two, lambda being the wavelength. And you have also a coherent frequency that tell you that if you change the frequency of your antenna of some value, the pattern will completely change. And this is well known in cavity theory. And in fact, in reality, we are not exactly on a closed cavity, you are in cavity with many obstacles. And we have a kind of regime which is a mix of all this. But what characterizes the wave field is the coherence length and the coherence frequency. And these two values are very important to uh, quantify the, non the degree of freedom of your wave field in the system. Uh, when you want to control a wave field in such an environment, you use the array of antenna. And now it is uh, uh, popular in 5G when you use what is called MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. You have many antenna that can transmit. Uh, it may be a, uh, a kind of matrix of antenna like this. And, and you can have many antenna that receive a signal. 
it may be all your smartphone. And now what characterizes at one frequency the complexity of your propagating medium is a matrix that we call the transfer matrix or the transmission matrix. If you imagine that you have many transmit antenna, alpha, beta, gamma, uh, and they send a sinusoidal wave, and you look through the complexity of the medium that you have with all multipath, all multi scattering, what you receive on each antenna uh, beta that you have here. And uh, this is a matrix of complex number because at one frequency, you describe the field by the complex number and this matrix has an amplitude and a phase. And this amplitude and phase depend on the complexity of the medium. Uh, when there is just free space, this matrix is very simple. It is just what is called Huygens principle or uh, Fresnel transform. But in a complex medium, this matrix may be a complex matrix full of random, of random number. It's a random matrix. Now, when you have this matrix, if your goal is to send a very good message to one antenna at point R, for example, if you have only one antenna that transmit, just one transmitter, one receiver, if antenna at R1 send a sinusoidal wave, what you receive on antenna R is just an element of a matrix I defined just before, H from R and Ri. It's a complex number which has an amplitude and a phase. If you look just what comes from R1 along this plane, you see a speckle figure if you have a complex medium. This speckle figure tells you that uh, the modulus is random. And in fact, the phase is also random. Here, you don't see the phase. But if you look, what is the phase coming from this point, R1? Because of multipath, the phase is a complex, maybe complex, and it is a random phase. And if you look just if one antenna emit, you have no focusing. If you have a second antenna, R2, which is at a distance bigger than the coherence length, it will create another pattern here, which is completely uncorrelated with this pattern. If you have a third antenna that send also a sinusoidal wave, you will obtain another pattern. All this, these three patterns are uncorrelated. If you just add uh, the field with these three antenna emitting together, you will add the modulus and you will have to take into account what is the phase of this system. And because each phase at each point is random, you add random phase and the summation gives you something which is not focused. It is also a random figure. And, and uh, nothing interesting, all these antenna emit together. That is to say, you send more energy, but you send as much energy at point R that at any other point. You have also to remember that you have spatial reciprocity that tell you that what is emitted from R1 when it comes to R, it is exactly the same complex number that if R emit to R1. Now, if you are here in a monochromatic signal with multiple antenna, how can you improve communication and focusing? But you can just do what is called phase conjugated. Instead of sending the, exactly the same sinusoidal wave with the same phase from each antenna, now you will uh, match uh, what you send from each antenna by sending from here H conjugated or from this element between R1 and R2. And here you send H conjugated from R2 and R1. And if you are doing this, what you are doing exactly is to send now different signal, but you control the phase. And now what you will receive in point R will be now a coherent addition of all the phase. And even if it is random modulus that you add, now you add them with a phase which is coherently adding at point R. And slowly you will see that here you have a bright spot. And this spot is a concentration of energy whose size is a kind of focal spot. Uh, the size of speckle grain, and it tells you uh, if you have many degree of freedom, and we call this spatial diversity, many antenna which are all incorrelated, you can focus very well by doing phase conjugation. 
this is what we call spatial diversity, and it is when you send just signal at one frequency in a limited bandwidth, which is limited by what I call the frequency correlation in my previous slide. Now you have another way to send a message from point from one antenna R2 to one point R. Instead of sending now a sinusoidal signal from R2, you can decide to work with broadband signal. And if you send a signal which is very a short pulse that contain many frequency, much more frequency that uh, each of them being uh, separated of more than the frequency coherence of your propagating medium. Now you can do something very interesting. You can send from point R2 just a short pulse. A, a short pulse is the sum of many sinusoidal waves, all emitted in phase because it is a symmetric pulse. And now if you look at the screen, what you have, when you have only one antenna emitting a short pulse, for the color blue, which corresponds to one sinusoidal wave of the spectrum of your pulse, you have a speckle pattern, which is blue. Uh, and it is not a focused speckle pattern. And it's oscillated at the frequency omega one. But together, you send the color red, and it creates also a color red pattern here that oscillates at frequency omega two. And you send also omega three, and you obtain another color pattern. And if all these three patterns are uncorrelated, oscillating each at different frequency, when you add them, you obtain uh, at any point a signal now that is spread in time. It is the summation of many sinusoidal waves, but all are arriving with random phase. All the phase are random. Uh, each correspond to a different frequency. And when you add them at this point, it is a random noise. And now if you look the, this pattern at one given time, it is a random pattern. And you have both random in space, random in time, when you send just a short pulse. This is due to multi-reflection and multi reverberation Now, if instead of sending a short pulse, you send the time reversal signal of the signal you have received before. Now it is exactly like you send from each antenna, each frequency, which is exactly phase conjugated for each frequency omega three, omega two, omega one. And when you are doing this, now because of spatial reciprocity, when you look what you obtain at this point, you will see that it exists a magic time where at this point suddenly you have a coherent addition of all the signal at one time. You begin to focus and you see that now the signal you receive at this point in time is concentrated in a very short amount of time. When you are doing this, you are playing on what we call the spectral diversity. You send many different frequencies in your pulse. And even if you have an omnidirectional antenna, the, the interaction with the random medium is matched to create a spatial temporal focusing. And this spatial temporal focusing is very important for wireless communication because it will allow you to send just a short pulse here which is focused on a small spot, even if your antenna is omnidirectional. But the medium here acts like a lens. It is like you transform a random medium in a lens because you use time reversal. But of course, this works very nicely uh, if you have very broadband signal and if you have a random medium and you can play this game. Now, this is called spectral diversity or frequency diversity. Now, usually when you have many antenna, uh, you can have spatial diversity because you have antenna positioned at different positions. And if you have many frequency, you have different uh, uncorrelated frequency. And it tells you that in fact, you have many spatial frequency degree of freedom. Uh, if you have 10 antenna and uh, eight uh, uncorrelated frequency, it is like you have 80 degree of freedoms. And when you have 80 degree of freedom, you can, it is a, you can play with this and to see how you can improve uh, communication through a complex medium. 
And in fact, we have played with this long time ago with ultrasound. We were using ultrasonic antenna made of uh, 20 or 40 ultrasonic transducer. And we were playing the game of learning how to focus through a complex medium like a forest of uh, wires here. And you have a short source, you send a short pulse of ultrasound, it go for this medium, and you record on each antenna long coda signal, it's a long time series. And if you take all this time theory and if you time reverse them and you send by many antenna, many antenna, it's mean that you have spatial diversity and a broadband signal, it means that you have frequency diversity. When you send all this spatial temporal coding, it will refocus back on this point uh, on a short pulse in time. And if you look at the size of the focal spot here, now the size becomes very thin. It's here it's become 35 times thinner than the same experiment if you are in free space. If you forget random medium, if you do this in free space, you have a very large focal spot, lambda multiplied by f over d, what is called the numerical aperture. But in presence of a random medium, things are better. You do focusing in space where you have a very thin size that depend on the size of the medium. The medium like is like a lens and it's focused. When you are, we have seen this with ultrasound, we decide to play communication. And we have done this experiment long time ago that is called uh, multi-user MIMO. And it was before people were doing this with microwave. Uh, we were using a set of antenna here a set of smartphone here, but it is not smartphone. It is a receiver antenna, very close one from the other at two wavelength distance. And we have this medium. And uh, we learn uh, what is the time reverse of what is coming from five antenna. And from here, we learn this, we time reverse. And when we do this through this complex medium, we are able to create independent focal spot on each smartphone. It is not smartphone, it is transducer here. And if we do the same job without the random medium, uh, if we play this, we learn what comes from three points, from five points, we time reverse, but it gives you a very big focal spot. And now if you want to send information, to send data to each of these antenna, now you want to send in parallel many bits of information of all these antenna, uh, you have something which is defined as the Shannon capacity. It tells you what is the maximum rate of information that you can transfer from one source to a receiver. If you have only one source and one receiver, you know that it depends on the logarithm of the signal to noise you have on the receiver. If you have a lot of noise, it is not good. Uh, the capacity is not very good. Uh, and if you have a very good signal to noise, the capacity is good. But now, what is interesting is to see what happens if you have now many antenna, many receiver, and now you want to know what is the maximum amount of bits that you can transfer per second and per hertz. And there is a beautiful uh, theorem uh, demonstrated by uh, El Attar in the 20 years ago that tell you that the number of information that you can transfer, the maximum number of information that you can transfer, depend of a matrix. Uh, here, you have the log, the, the identity matrix, and you have here H, H DAG. H, it is the so-called transmit matrix. If you send here a signal from here, it is multiplied by H, and it is what you receive here. Now, if you take this signal and if you time reverse this signal and you send it back, uh, time reversal at one frequency, it is phase conjugation and sending back, it is to multiply by H transpose. And this operator is an operator that tell you, uh, uh, it is what we call the time reversal operator. And this operator has a certain number of invariants. And the number of invariant of this operator uh, is related to the number of singular value of the H matrix. And each of the singular value, it corresponds a singular vector. And when you look 
uh, what is the amount of information that you can send through the complex medium? If we do the experiment with ultrasound, for example, when you have 40 antenna here and 40 here, and if you put this random medium, if you don't put any medium, just water you know, or free space, you have only six singular values because you can create only six focal spots which are independent through a classical medium. But if you introduce a random medium, suddenly you see that you can create much more singular value that is much more independent channel that can uh, transport information. And here you can send 34 channels. And this explains why when you introduce a random medium, here you can very well set, you can send more information because here the number of singular value will play a role to define what is the Shannon capacity and the Shannon capacity will grow. But this is very nice, uh, but this is a technique that costs a lot. It costs to use very broadband signal to use uh, usually many independent frequency and it needs to have programmable transmitter. And all this technique can be put now, not for ultrasound, but for electromagnetic wave. And we have played with this by using a set of antenna here to transmit, a set to receive, and by introducing complex medium. And all what I say is valid for electromagnetic wave. What you have to do is to control the phase of the signal that you send from each antenna. Now, playing this is 5G. 5G costs a lot because you need to have many controllable antenna. And the problem you have is that you are not always in a complex medium. When you use 5G, if you are, all your antenna are far at, uh, for example, uh, 200 meters from you, and if there are not many obstacles, uh, you have not a lot of uh, spatial diversity because all your antenna are correlated. And if you are in a random medium, your antenna are not correlated. And all this technique of 5G is very interesting, but it needs many antenna, many electronics, and it needs many spatial diversity. And you have not always this. Now, how can you improve 5G? And our idea uh, that we tried to develop nearly 10 years ago was to say, today, we don't work with very broadband signal in 5G. We work with narrow band signal. Typically, you have 100 megahertz of bandwidth around 2.4 gigahertz or 3.5 gigahertz in 5G. Now, what you can introduce is tunable meta surface in your environment. And the problem we are looking is the following I have two antenna, one antenna A and transmit a pulse. And I want to send a very good signal to antenna B. If I am in free space, if B is far from A, uh, what I send from A diverge and the level of signal is not very good and my signal to noise is not very good. But imagine that I am in a closed room and that antenna A that emit and antenna B that emit are at the four key of a closed room whose size, whose shape is an ellipsoidal room. If you are in the Parisian metro, uh, if you look, uh, the size, uh, the transverse pattern is an ellipsoidal. And when you speak from point A, a guy at point B listens perfectly what you say, because all the signal you send are put in phase when they arrive at B. Of course, you cannot uh, make rooms that are ellipsoidal in cities. Uh, and you can uh, transform city in ellipsoid. But you can decide, I will introduce in my environment a tunable boundary. It is a boundary, which is a meta surface on which I can control the reflectivity for the frequency I use. And if I put a tunable boundary here, I ask, can I shape my boundary to uh, make something which is a kind of ellipsoidal uh, pattern. And like this, if I have this, all what I send from A will focus on B. Can I play with this? And the idea is the following. Imagine that you have a tunable boundary where, uh, and this boundary 
uh, you put this in the room somewhere. And now you have two antenna, one antenna A, one B. A can be outside the room, and if there is a window, something will come. But now let us measure the field emitted by R when it's arrived just close to this boundary. If I can measure an element of the matrix H R R I, I put this in memory. It's a complex number with an amplitude and phase. Now imagine that you can measure what comes from B individually. You measure another element of the matrix B and R I, where R I is the position of your boundary. And you measure this. Now imagine that you have two, all this that you put in your memory. And imagine now that you put a boundary here that you control the reflectivity. And imagine that the reflectivity can be controlled in amplitude and in phase. If you just put now a reflectivity, which is exactly uh, H conjugated of, of what is coming from R, if you put this on this boundary, all what you send from R come back on R. This is a phase conjugated mirror. Everything come back. Okay, not very interesting for us. Now imagine that B emit and that you create here a reflectivity which is H conjugated of B. All what you receive when you when B send is reverse and come back on B. Okay, not very interesting. You have built two phase conjugated mirror. But now imagine that here you build a mirror whose reflectivity is the product of the reflectivity of, me, of point A and of point B. If you have a reflectivity with exactly the, phase con the product of the two phase conjugated mirror, uh, if you look now what happened for each signal that you send from A, when it's arrived here, it has some phase. This depends of all the complexity of the room. Uh, now, when it's come from Ri to B, it has some phase. But now, uh, if you add the good phase, which is H conjugated multiplied by H conjugated, now you exactly put everybody in phase. And now, all what you send from R, refocus on B. And it is the spatial diversity that you use. But now, it is passive antenna. You don't need to put this antenna uh, at 10 kilometers. Uh, you are this antenna very close from you. And this antenna now begin to focus on point B. And in fact, you have also some time from A to B, a direct wave, uh, which, which can be called the line of sight wave, but also <clears throat> it will be a wave that go everywhere without going through this mirror. And it is another vector. And now if you control this mirror, and if you just uh, add a, con a constant phase, all what is coming directly plus this now are put together and you have a huge signal on point B. Now, if you have this intelligent meta surface here, uh, but it needs to know what is coming from A and what is coming from B, you improve communication and it is a passive antenna it is not an antenna, it is a passive mirror. It does not consume energy uh, and it's an interesting device. Now, uh, you can uh, simplify what I say. Instead of creating a perfect phase conjugated mirror, you can create a phase only mirror. You don't take into account the amplitude, it is just a phase only mirror. And it will put all your signal in phase, but the amplitude will be not exactly the one of the phase conjugated mirror. And now you can make another simplification. You can replace the control of phase by a binary phase mirror that will just reverse what is coming or just reflected without changing the signal. And a binary phase conjugated mirror is not a Five minutes. alternative. If your mirror is big, imagine that you have a perfect mirror, uh, reflecting mirror, when a, a signal coming from point A is received here, if it's focused back, this is a perfect mirror, it gives you a nice focal spot. Now there are theorem, I have no time to show you, that tell you that if you use just a two-phase mirror, uh, you will refocus back at the good point, creating a wave like this one, but divide by 
factor multiplied by two over pi, it is not as big, and you create over parasitic wave. But the level of this wave is not so big. And when the size of your mirror contains many Fresnel zones, we call this Fresnel zone, in fact, the ratio between your focus and the level of side lobes is not too big. Here for the amplitude, it is 20 in this configuration, which means that for the energy, it is 400. And making a two-state uh, phase conjugate, a, a two-state mirror is not very difficult. You can build this very easily, and this is what we have done with Geoffroy Lorosé uh, some years ago. It, it was just to divide a surface in small pixel, each of them has a size which is lambda over two, and each pixel of your mirror is a resonator, a flat resonator. And when you send an incoming wave on a resonator, if the incoming wave it has the same frequency as the resonator, there is a shift of pi by the resonator. And if you have a ground plate here, sorry, uh, there is another shift of pi, and when you come back through the resonator, uh, you have, in fact, no phase shift, two pi. This is when you send exactly a wave at the frequency of your resonator. But now, if your resonator, you put a parasitic resonator, and you put a short circuit by using a diode, you can change the frequency of your resonator just by acting on a diode. And now, suddenly, when you send a wave, uh, what is coming through uh, uh, is just reflected by the ground plate, and you have pi. And it's a system that has two, uh, two, uh, two binary phase. And making this two binary phase is not very difficult. It does not cost a, a lot of money. You have just to use a small diode uh, that you put on or out. And if you play with this, you put this in a room, uh, you put in another room an antenna that sends a signal, and you want to improve the communication to this point. And here, instead of measuring, like I explained, the field uh, uh, on the meta surface coming from A and B, now you can also use the optimization algorithm. You don't know anything on the room, and you play with this. Uh, you, you begin by a, a smart mirror in some states. You look what is the level of signal you have in one antenna, and you change now your pixel configuration. And because the spatial correlation of the wave field is lambda over two, you don't need to try uh, billions of configuration. You just try for each one configuration, and you change it, and you see if it is better communication, and, and, and you move. And after, you come back. And we have played with this initially, and here you, you see uh, Fabrice Lemont, you change this very quickly, uh, and uh, you move your antenna in a position which is not good, and it's come back. And, and now the system learn how to go on this. I, I will just go very quickly. Uh, sorry. Now, the same ID can be used not to send signal to one antenna, but to many antenna. And now what you can do is you can change the complexity of a room by putting just on one wall of a room this. And now what you want to improve is not only communication with between all these antenna and one antenna, but with, between all these antenna and many antenna. And now you can try to transform your mirror to make that all your channel Instead of having a big value and a small value, these are the singular value, now each are at the same value. And when you are doing this, you are doing what is called water filling, uh, and you try to put all the channel with the same value, and you are finding very quickly what is the best way by changing the room configuration to put all your singular value to one, and by optimizing the transmission and the number of information you can send become very wide. Just to finish, we have begun by playing with this long, relatively long time ago. Nobody was interested by this during six years. And we make this new approach uh, two years ago by using not, uh, by using MIMO configuration plus this. And now 
there is a lot of people interested by these things, and now people call this reconfigurable intelligent surface. And just only in year 2020, there has been nearly 400 papers on this. And now all the complexity of the problem is this. You have your base station with many antennas, you have your smartphone with many users, and you put now this intelligent boundary or in the city or in the room, and you play with this. And now uh, people are beginning to build this kind of meta surface. Here it is a meta surface built by MIT this year with 3,200 components. And uh, this kind of meta surface in the future, they can be soft. Uh, it's a new kind of material that can completely control weight. And I, I will stop on this just telling you that you can do the same for sound wave. And this is something that we have done making a smart uh, reconfigurable material for sound wave. And this is something that we have done uh, at Hong Kong University with Guang Kong Ma in Pingsheng. And we can control phase of wave in room and it is a reconfigurable wall that can allow you to focus very well in a room, but it is narrow. I will stop on this. The concept of this new material uh, is related also to the concept of holography. Holography is a way to make interference between different waves and to create holograms. And in fact, the way we work on this meta surface is not exactly holography, it is what I call reverse holography. And in fact, it is a way to control very effectively waves in uh, rooms in complex media. I will stop here. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's see if we have time for, uh, for a question, if there is a question. Thank you for the really nice talk, by the way. <laughs> yeah. OK, uh, the question, I, I have a question, a very fast one, actually. So it looks like that the limitation really is the number of pixels, or I don't know how to call it, the dimension of H, right? Yeah, uh, in fact, it is the number of pixels. It is, in fact, not exactly the number of pixels. It is the number of spatial degree of freedom that you can create on your mirror. And if you put too many pixels on the wall, it is not very interesting. Okay. Uh, you have, well, you, you can put, but the control is more, more complex. But somewhere, uh, it, it is in this idea of uh, the big advantage, well, somewhere the number of pixels play a very important role, but, uh, all these pixels are not completely uncorrelated. Uh, it, it depends on the structure of your environment. Uh, and in fact, uh, the, the best wall is, of course, a wall where the pixel size is lambda over two. What you want, I, I just come back on one point. I, I don't know if I am. Uh, perhaps you remember when here. Oh, it's it's I, fine. It's just a. Yeah. OK. You remember I say we used a binary phase uh, panel. Binary phase is very easy to build and it is very easily to control. But binary become interesting if you have in your mirror a certain number of what are called Fresnel zones. If you have enough of this, binary phase is very efficient. Okay. And it, and it gives you, uh, for any environment, the number of pixels you need to, to improve really your, your signal to noise. Only. OK. Thank you for the really futuristic uh, talk. I think uh, it's time now to, to thank you, everyone, uh, to be part of this, uh, of this uh, uh, seminar.